Hello and welcome into my latest live stream. Today is the 7th of December, 2018. It's Friday. Hey guys, welcome in. And today we're gonna do something a little bit more technical than I normally do. But before I get started, I'm gonna wait for a moment to give everybody a chance to get into the, uh, into the chat room because they just now would have received notification, I hope, that the stream has gone live. If you aren't receiving notifications, it's probably because you haven't subscribed. Or you subscribed, but you didn't ring the bell. You didn't hit that little bell icon. So just real quickly, if you want to subscribe, you've got to hit that subscribe button. And then the little bell icon over here, you got to click it and tell it that you want to be notified and how. And while you're at it, you can go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. And uh, that just doesn't really do a whole lot, really. but it, if you like these kind of videos, it tells the creator you like those kind of videos. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna stall here for a minute and give people a chance to jump into the chat. And in the meantime, for the people that are already here, let me say hello to Colin Hilton and Mark Baguette, Baggett, Richard Angeline, Robert Stoll, Jens Carlson, Jesse Kirk, Philip Musto, uh, Jens Carlson, Tony Vento, I don't know if I mentioned some of these names twice, Russell Franzen, uh, Christopher Roby looks like the first to join, uh, or at least the first to, to mention something in the chat. Trevor Dunn, Cornbread Man, Boru, Dane Paul Stewart, Christopher Roby, Kieran Blackburn, Richard Angeline, Robert Stoll, I think I mentioned, Sharon Idle joins us, and Tony Wallow. Michael Schmitz, Donald Burton joins us from Chicago, Superman G. Martin Postema, Nelson Contreras, John Wilson. Let me just say, I got a very nice Christmas card in the mail today from John Wilson. Let me also say that um, John's been an awesome supporter of the channel, and today's show is being sponsored, sponsored not by a company, but by a viewer just like you. And his name is John Wilson. He is in the chat today. Be sure and give him a shout out as well as Jesse Kirk, as well as Colton Hilton. These are all a, a, the equivalent of having a sponsor. When you have viewers who contribute like these guys contribute as frequently as they do, this is what makes this possible. Oh, and let's not leave out uh, Magni Johansson, who's just contributed 219 Norwegian krona, which, I don't know, what is that, about 20 US dollars, I think, 200. Let's look that up real quick, too. I'm curious. $25.81 US. Well, that's very generous, and uh, Magni's not his first contribution, I hope not his last, and thank you for supporting the channel. We're just waiting for a few people, a few more people to come in. Um, oh, and, and Peter Laycock. So Peter Laycock, Colin Hilton, uh, Jesse Kirk, and John Wilson. I got that card from John. Let me show you. The, it's a very nice card. Good excuse to close my front door, because you know, I'm sure I'll have packages delivered <laughs> while I'm live. Um, let me see. So I got a card here from John Wilson that arrived in today's mail. It's a very nice Christmas card acknowledging my mother-in-law's passing recently and uh, wishing us the best. And, and uh, I'm confused. He says his name's John, and then he puts quotes, and then he says Jack, and sometimes he signs John, and sometimes he signs Jack. So I don't know if you like to be called Jack or you like to be called John, <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, and he sent a, a, a gift card to Lowe's, which is fantastic because I'm needing to buy some shelving units for my back office. That's my goal for 2019 is to get this place cleaned up. And uh, he also mentioned that he wanted to come out and visit in the summer. I don't know why you'd want to come to Arizona in the summertime, but uh, would love to meet up with you if you do. All right, let me just put this stuff away and let's get a little light on. Let me put this back here. So again, um, John made a, a generous contribution yesterday and then I got that card in the mail also from John or, or Jack. And uh, you know, it's viewers like you that enable me to just keep cranking out content left and right day after day, much more frequently and at much higher quality. So thank you guys for that. Let me just crack open a Coke here so we can get started. Now you'll recognize Thready here. So Thready is a crowdfunded build and everybody who contributed to Thready 
Their names are all on the front of this computer right here, so you can see. We want to make sure that everybody gets the credit they deserve, because without them, Thready would not have been possible. Now, Thready violates a lot of the rules I use when I build, and the people who are not regulars to the channel, they think I'm a hypocrite because I picked a lot of parts for Thready that I said I don't recommend for customers. And the reason is, for those of you that are new to the channel, is I don't want to have to support equipment that I'm not familiar with. And if you've been following along with Thready, there's been, uh, right out of the gate, uh, trying to configure the NVMe RAID was a real challenge just on day one of the build, as well as uh, ongoing issues with noise and cooling that just don't happen with other, you know, uh, less cutting edge chips. This is sort of what comes with the territory if you're gonna jump into the latest and greatest and have the fastest bleeding edge tech, you're gonna be struggling and fighting with it a little bit. Um, sorry, this is bothering me. There, I feel better now. <laughs> um, so today, what I've done is there are three Samsung Evo 500 gig NVMe drives installed on this motherboard. Now, unless you have a Threadripper chip or you have a, a, a Core i7X series chip, it wouldn't make sense for you to do this because you don't have the bandwidth. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on just a second. Let's see who this is. Hello? 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 <laughs> well, that was totally worth it. <laughs> Better keep my phone out here. Maybe if a, if a spammer, or I'm sorry, if a scammer calls, we'll have a little fun. It may interrupt the feed, but uh, the best way to get sp uh, scammers to stop calling you is to mess with them, to waste their time. They, they very rarely call me now. I can't imagine why that is. So I apologize for that uh, interruption there, but uh, this is live. All right. So as I was saying, I've got three 500 gig NVMe drives there are three M.2 sockets on this board and it offers a, uh, a RAID configuration. So we won't get into what NVMe is, we won't get into what RAID is, I've got other videos that explain all that, so we're assuming at this point that you understand that terminology and, and uh, right now I have uh, Windows 10 installed on a single uh, 500 gig drive because I erased the RAID array because I screwed up, I made a mistake. I used snappy driver installer and it had a new RAID driver available and when I installed it the system wouldn't boot anymore and because I didn't make any rescue media while the system was working no rescue media will see my storage drive because the AMD RAID uh, NVMe RAID driver is kinda it's not really industry accepted at least not yet and may never be it's a not very many people run it and you know even an Acronis Trimage boot disk won't see it without adding drivers manually. And I didn't want to spend the time to make a Windows recovery disk and inject the, the necessary drivers for the uh, Windows recovery disk to see. It was just very time consuming. And I said, you know what? It's not even worth having the RAID 0 because real world applications, the machine isn't running any faster for me. On benchmarks, it's amazing, very impressive. But in the real life, um, I can't tell a difference. But here's the thing. I realized I was cleaning up some old backups and I realized I made a backup of Thready here in September when everything was installed and working before I messed up with Snappy Driver Installer, which is why I don't recommend Snappy Driver Installer unless you're a tech. And again, if it was an Intel-based RAID system, it wouldn't be a problem because Windows recognizes that and Acronis recognizes that, but because it's AMD and it's the X399 NVMe RAID, it's an oddball. So you have to manually inject drivers into whatever bootable media if you want to be able to see the RAID array. And I said, you know what, it's not worth it. I'm just going to erase the RAID array, RAID array. In fact, there's many people who advise not booting from a RAID array for this very reason. They say, make it a secondary drive if you're going to have it at all. I understand why they say that. But in the meantime, since I found the backup, I thought, you know what, let's put it back the way it was because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and I thought we can turn this into a lesson. You know, I can show you guys how this all works. 
So right now, if you were watching yesterday or the day before, or whenever it was, I've had Threadripper out here, um, you've seen it boot to a single NVMe drive, and then the other two NVMe drives are just drive letter D and drive letter E, and they're completely empty. So let's fire it up and I'll show you the current status of the machine. Uh, I gotta go to a different input here, hold on. So this is, this no signal that you see, this comes from the video capture card. Uh, this video capture card is really fancy and it was provided by uh, a wonderful viewer here, um, Colin Hilton. It, it's expensive and he provided it and it's what's enabling me to make these really cool picture and picture videos in crystal clarity. And so when the video capture card doesn't have a signal, it says no signal. You know why it doesn't have a signal? Because the machine's off. So let's turn the machine on. There we go. And this should now boot uh, into Windows 10 and you'll see that happen on the screen right here in just a moment as it initializes. Let me give a quick shout out to a few more friends while we're waiting. Um, Geekazoid Tech, that's Dan, he joins us. Hi Dan, uh, Bill Ottinger. Welcome, Bill, a frequent contributor. I see Catherine Anna Hauserman. If you're looking to, for build advice, if you're putting a system together and you want to know, you know what parts you should buy or perhaps you've already selected your parts and you want a second opinion, you can reach out to Catherine Hauserman here in the chat. And generally, she works on Facebook with people. She does it completely free of charge out of the kindness of her heart. All she asks for in return is a thank you and um, one person, one person so far has had a bad thing to say about Catherine and they were demanding that she get back to them immediately and she was, you know, she has a life. I think she might even have been in the hospital. Said she was ignoring him and was complaining to me even though he didn't pay anything for this service. So she didn't do anything wrong. It was the person being unreasonable. So I want you to emphasize that if you're a reasonable person, <laughs> Catherine would love to help you. <laughs> All right, so uh, anyway, you see we booted here to Windows 10. This is how the system was. And if we go over here to, uh, oh, I gotta use this mouse. We go over here to um, the My Computer icon or this PC, you'll see we've got the C drive, the D drive, and the E drive. They're all NVMe M.2 drives separated out. We don't have to run them in a RAID array, but we can if we want to. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're going to, I've already made an Acronis system image of the system on the one drive, just in case I want to put it back this way. And as I mentioned, the uh, Acronis software, the regular bootable media that I normally use, it will not see the RAID array. Once I configure the RAID array, the, all the drives get wiped and there's no data on them and the system won't be bootable. So I have to boot from an Acronis rescue disk. Well, the basic Acronis rescue disk will not see the RAID array. So you have to load the Acronis software uh, into either the system before you do it or into another working system and then you can inject the drivers manually. You would go to the motherboard manufacturer's website. In this case, this is a Gigabyte X399 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. We go to Gigabyte's website, we go to the support page for this motherboard, and we download the RAID, uh, the NVMe RAID drivers. And then we load a Cronus, we say we want to create a Windows PE bootable media. You see the normal Acronis bootable media that I download right from Acronis is a Linux-based media. I don't think there are drivers for the NVMe RAID in Linux, but it's just a lot easier to use the, the Windows PE version of the Acronis Media, and you can add other tools to it if you want to, like a Hiren's Boot CD sort of situation where you can put utilities and things in addition, so this kind of becomes one flash drive to rule them all. <laughs> but in the meantime, even if you just make a basic Acronis Boot Media, you can inject the drivers, or if you make it from the machine that already has the drivers on it, well, it's configured and working, it'll do it for you automatically. But be that as it may, I, I made another separate uh, Acronis Trimage Rescue Media that's now the Windows PE. Uh, companies are not allowed to distribute Windows PE. Microsoft requires that individuals make their own Windows PE under the assumption that those individuals own a license to Microsoft. Windows. 
right? So Acronis can't make it available for download like the Linux version of the bootable media. So anyway, so you install Acronis on your machine. You, there's a, under the tools option, there's an option to create the Windows PE version and you can make an ISO image or you can go a flash drive and it needs two gigs. In fact, if you wanted to, if you had a big flash drive, like this flash drive is 256 gigs, this one right here. These were like uh, $86 on Amazon. SanDisk Extreme Pro, USB 3.1, 256 gigs. Really small, normal flash drive size. Super fast, like SSD type, type speeds going through USB 3.1. You know, you're looking at 300 to 400 megabytes per second on the reads. So if your time is valuable, you spend the extra money and get a fast flash drive. I realize there are cheaper flash drives and they're a lot slower. If I see a flash drive that's USB 2.0, unless it's like 16 gigs or smaller, I'm not buying it, it's too slow. And bear in mind that if you have an older computer, the USB 3 flash drives will work on an older USB 2.0 based computer or even USB 1, it's all backwards compatible. But I want the speed if I can have the speed so it's possible to take a flash drive like this and create a two gigabyte partition on it and then install a Cronus to it and then use the rest of that and partition it separately and put all of your backup images on it. So then you don't need two flash drives like I have here. This is my Cronus flash drive. These are my Cronus backups. But if I take the time to partition this and put the Cronus bootable on the two gig partition and leave the rest of the out of 256 gigs, you know, will I miss two gigs? and then it becomes a separate drive letter. So there'll be two drive letters on the flash drive. It'll boot to one drive letter and you go to the other drive letter to access the other partition. And it just keeps everything in a small package. That also means if you lose this or it's damaged, all your stuff's gone. So like any other thing that's important to you, you wanna have copies or duplicates. So with that, uh, what I wanna do first and foremost is I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. Now that you see we're, we're running on just the C drive. When we re-enable the RAID, it'll be a RAID 0 array combining all three drives into one large drive. There'll be uh, no redundancy. So basically, if any single drive fails, the whole RAID array will fail. So backups are critical. If you're gonna be running a RAID 0 array, it is critical because if any single drive fails, you lose everything because the computer, what the RAID 0 is going to do is it's gonna trick Windows into using all three drives as one. Windows is only going to see one drive that's three times the size. So instead of a C drive that's, you know, 442 gigs or whatever that says, it'll be three times that. And it'll read and write at almost three times the speed because each drive is going to do 33 and a third of the percent of the work simultaneously. So all reads are happening. Each drive does one third of the work on reads and writes and contains one third of the data. So they all work together at the same time to triple our speeds on reads and writes. But as I mentioned, well, that's impressive to look at the benchmarks and I will show you the benchmarks. <laughs> In real world ap applications, I can't notice a difference and it's weird because it's a significant number difference in the benchmarks. But let me just show you the benchmarks right now. Let's go to, um, Crystal Disk Mark, and let me show you what our numbers look like right now. So let's just, oops, let's close that out. The Crystal Disk Mark is a free piece of software. Just Google Crystal Disk Mark. Download the zip version, the portable version. I never install the software. I only run the portable version. Make sure you select the right drive. In this case, we're gonna test drive C, and we're gonna do all the read and write uh, tests. Uh, this is similar to what I did yesterday, so we're going to reiterate this part of yesterday's uh, broadcast. And I want you to remember the numbers or remember this time in the video because DVR mode is enabled on this live video, and that means you can rewind this live video right now, just like you were watching any other pre-recorded video. Um, so we're going to let this test finish here in a second, and while that's running, Let me um, go back to the chat here and uh, say hello and answer any questions while we're waiting. Looks like I missed a contribution. Uh, $10 was 
provided by Chip. And Chip says, thanks for your videos. Hey, Chip, thanks for your support and your contribution. Looks like we have 435 people watching live. Welcome in, everybody. And hopefully, this will be a very educational uh, video. Now, uh, hold on. I, I have to have a drink. I've got a lot of talking ahead of me. <clears throat> this is going to take a minute to finish and then we will go into the BIOS and I will show you how to configure the RAID array which is really confusing on this. The way Gigabyte implemented this RAID implementation is the strangest thing I've ever seen. You've got to go into three different screens three different menus. It should all have been under one menu with submenus, in my opinion. That's why it's important to document this on video. So nobody has to struggle like I did trying to get this figured out. In fact, when I was doing the build live a couple of months ago, well, gosh, it's almost been a year ago. I think it was in April or May. It was April, I think we did this. Even people in the chat were just spitting out ideas. They had no idea didn't make sense to anybody in the chat room. They were like, try this and try that. And at that point, the chat room was just guessing, you know, with, you know, go to this SATA controller and turn on RAID. Uh, just, you know, suggestions that didn't make any sense. So I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done because I'm pretty sure I know how to do it now. That's the one benefit of making mistakes is those lessons tend to stay with you longer than if it's something you just got lucky at, you know, or, um, or perhaps you already have the knowledge. But for me, I've set up raids numerous times in BIOSes before. Never experienced anything like this. But here we go. It's bleeding edge technology. It is a bit finicky and it implements a bit different. And it's got some evolution to go through because this is sort of a first implementation that I've ever seen of NVMe RAID. And there are very few chipsets that can support this. So the X99 chipset can support it. Uh, it has to do with how much data the CPU can handle at any given time and how much bandwidth is being provided back and forth. So if a motherboard doesn't have three M.2 drive slots or a RAID option, it's because there's no data bandwidth, data bandwidth capable of handling that, which I've demonstrated in a previous video on why you would not even want to put two NVMe drives together on a regular Intel Core i7 chip. It's a weight, it actually slows you down, except your write speeds go up one third, but everything else latency increases because you've already reached the maximum speed with one drive on an Intel Core i7 chip, you know, on an X170, 270, 370 chipset. That's a limitation of the chipset. And that's why the Threadripper is so much more money. And, you know, that's why we have quad channel RAM available on Threadripper. You don't have it available on a typical Core i7, you know, a socket 1151 chip, or even a typical Ryzen processor. When you get into Threadripper or you get into the i7 X series or Xeon processors, that's where memory lanes become more available. And again, it's a situation that's probably a waste of money for most people, because if you're not setting up a configuration like this, you don't need to spend the extra money for the motherboard and the quad channel RAM and all the other stuff. If you're not using the bandwidth, it's like buying a thousand horsepower car and using it to take the kids back and forth to school on a 25 mile an hour road. You know, it's no, there's no, no point in having a thousand horsepower car if you're not using a thousand horsepower. Unless you just have a lot of money, in which case, knock yourself out. And you like to take the car to the shop all the time and have it constantly fixed because that's bleeding edge, folks. All right, so there's our final numbers. We have, uh, we'll just vaguely remember 3,000 on the right, I'm sorry, 3,000 on the reads, right? You see that up here? Where's my mouse? Hold on. Okay, right up here it says 3,000. We're just gonna round it down, okay? 3,000 and 1,700. Just remember those two numbers. That's all I'm saying. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut the computer down. All right, everything's off. We're gonna turn it back on and I'm gonna go into the BIOS by pressing the delete key. Uh, this is the keyboard that's hooked up over here. So, um, 
And Planet Ky Cryos has contributed $5. Just wait till quantum computing comes into play and how difficult that will be. Yeah, right? All right, so we're going to hit the delete button, get us into the BIOS. And the first thing I have to do is turn something off called CSM. So we go down here to CSM support, and we have to disable that. If we want to have NVMe RAID, and I want to be very clear on this. Most of you watching, this doesn't apply to you. Unless you have an X399 chipset with three NVMe drives that you want to combine into making one big fast drive, then nothing I'm about to show you is anything you can replicate unless you have similar hardware situation. But if you do have it, this is how you do it because it's really weird. Where it says CSM support, we need to turn that to enabled or flip it to enabled. And then we have to save and exit the BIOS. So then another option will become available now. So that's step one. So once the screen comes back up and I hit delete again to get me back into the BIOS, here we go. So I'll hit delete. Very good. And we go over to where it says, uh, where is it? Chipset. And under NVMe RAID mode, we change that to enabled. And right down here, you will see an option appear. I, I'm going to have to reset the BIOS again. So we'll go back to save and exit. So now that when we come back in RAID mode, we'll be enabled on the NVMe drives. It's very confusing to set this up. It really is. So I'm going to hit delete and go back into the BIOS now. And this should be the last time I have to go in here. I'm going to go over to peripherals. Is it peripherals? No. Where is it? I can't find it. CSM support got enabled again for some reason. Let's disable CSM support. Hold on. See, I told you this was a mess. CSM support's disabled. Let's make sure RAID mode is enabled. It is. Everything looks good. Save and exit. You know why that happened? Because I said it was the last time I was have to go in. I, I jinxed myself. All right. The reason I had to do that is when those options take effect by restarting, then new options become available. And I'm looking for uh, a RAID configuration option in the peripherals part of the BIOS, and I'm not seeing it yet. So let me just skip over. Is CSM disabled? Yes, it stays disabled now. Good. Under peripherals, do I have RAID Expert 2? I do. It's all the way down here. That's what I was looking for. So I go on RAID Expert 2, and I hit Enter, and I go to Array Management, and I press Enter, and it says Manage, I'm sorry, uh, Create Array. Oh, doesn't offer it. Manage Array Properties. Let's do that first. Array 1 is a non-RAID. Oh, the reason this happened is because the NVMe drive isn't blank. Remember, I have an operating system on it. So I have to delete that. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go back and say Delete Array check all and delete arrays. Now before the yes, you notice if I go down it skips right over yes to no. Do you see that? It's I, I can't choose yes. That's because I have to turn the yes option on because if you delete your array everything on your hard drives is going to be erased. And that's what I want it to do. So they're very cautious about this. You have to enable. Now yes I can select and it did it. Now I can create an array and it says what RAID level do I want. So I hit enter and I want a RAID level 0 is what I want. That's going to combine all the drives into one for performance reasons. It wants to know which of my NVMe drives do I want to use in that RAID 0. I want to use them all. So I'm going to hit select. I'm going to say check all and apply changes. That's it. We are done with the RAID array. You'll see that array size is no longer 500 gigs. It's now 1.5 terabytes, which is 500 gigs times 3. Everything else we can leave alone. There's nothing else to do here, and we can save and exit the setup. Now, when I go to reboot, it has nothing to boot to. The operating system's been wiped out. All my programs, all my data, all that's been wiped out. So this is not something you want to take lightly. If this was a brand new build, you would just immediately go to create array. Well, if you're using brand new drives. 
The only reason I had to delete an existing array was because the machine was bootable before. I had an operating system. So now it just boots right into the BIOS because it has nothing else to boot to. So I have to use this specially made Acronis PE boot disk right here. That's what this, this is an A data drive. And it only takes about, you only need a two gig flash drive for this, like I said. Um, if you don't want to waste a big flash drive, then just make a partition that's two gigs and put Acronis on that. So I'm going to shut the machine off, and I'm going to put this flash drive into a USB port. Now, the Acronis trimage I made with the RAID array enabled is on this flash drive here. So I'm going to plug this flash drive in as well. And we're going to turn the machine back on. And I don't have to go into the BIOS. I shouldn't have to because the BIOS is going to look for anything to boot to. And if it doesn't find anything, it automatically you know, goes into the BIOS as you just watched. But now when it looks for something to boot to, it should find that flash drive and go, hey, there's something I can boot to. And it should just automatically boot to it. Now this is a Windows PE disk, so it's going to look a bit like Windows when it starts. You may get the little round circle that you see when you're loading Windows 10. There it is, speak of the devil. And in just a moment, uh, it's going to load us into a Windows uh, pre-installation environment, or PE. Like, remember PE in high school? It's not that. And in just a moment here, uh, we're going to get the screen. And it says, what do you want to do? Well, I want to recover my disks. So I click on Recover. And I'll hit Browse. And you'll see I've got two images on this flash drive. Thready with RAID and Thready without RAID. And you'll see the sizes. It's uh, 12 gigs here and 23 gigs there. Because Acronis uh, does file compression, when I extract and restore this 23 gig file, it actually consumes 96 gigs of hard drive space because it's got Windows 10, it's got Acronis on it, you know, within Windows, it's got Office 365 in there. Windows is already activated, all the updates are already installed, all the drivers are already installed, Office is activated, and it restores all of that back to the way it was, like a photograph on the day I took the image, just like taking a picture, only it's of all the data on the hard drive. And that includes temp files, if you had viruses, <laughs> multiple users, it grabs everything. This is a clean install of uh, the RAID array with the software I mentioned already installed. It's otherwise a clean install, so I don't have to worry about viruses or multiple users. And that's the best time, you know, once you have your system configured the way you like it, that is the best time to make an image of it. And you don't need to use Acronis to make an image of it. Windows 10 has its own imaging software. You just don't get all of these cool tools and, you, and uh, options and bells, whistles, and features. Microsoft gives you a very basic tool set to create an image onto an external drive, whether that be USB or SSD or HDD or... I don't know, any other type of storage media. Another topic for another video, another day. I want you to pay attention to how fast this whole thing happens. You guys should know by now how long Windows takes to install, and then you have to download updates, and you have to put on drivers. OK, all that's already been done. All we're doing is restoring it, and I want you to pay attention to how fast this takes place and why it's important to me that I have a fast flash drive. Because this could take 10 times, or 20 times, or 30 times longer if I bought one of those really cheap, really inexpensive, high capacity flash drives, I'll be here all day, especially on the writes. So anyway, I'm selecting Threadripper with RAID, and I click OK. That's the one I want, Threadripper with RAID. I'm going to click Next. And he wants to know if I want to select certain files and folders or if I want to recover the whole thing. I want to recover the whole thing, so I click Next. And I just put a check on Disk 1, and it's going to grab all the partitions, boots, and all everything again. Disk 1 is actually Disk 1, 2, and 3 combined. You notice it says Disk 1 size is 1.3 terabytes. I don't have a, all I have are 500 gig drives in here, right? So. That's the only way I know it's a RAID. There's nothing here that tells me it's a RAID. That's why it's important you name your files correctly. <laughs> All right, so we're going to hit Next. And now it's going to analyze that and make sure that uh, everything is, is going to fit where I want to put it. So it's taking a look at the partitions. 
And you'll see this looks very similar to the Linux rescue disk that I use. It's actually a little bit more information on the Windows PE version. And it's a much more configurable. Now you'll see it's only offering me disk one and disk two. Uh, there is no other option for me to install. And what that means is somewhere in the BIOS I've missed something that the RAID array is not configured correctly because I should see the RAID array being offered to me here. So that means I've made a mistake. So I have to stop and just shut everything off. And I have to go back into the BIOS and double check what I did because I might have missed something. Like I said, the, the whole RAID setup on this motherboard is weird. And uh, I'll show you here in a second. We'll hit delete to go back in the BIOS. Let's make sure none of the BIOS options that I selected had gone back for any reason. So we'll go to um, CSM support is disabled. Very good. Under chipset, we want to make sure that NVMe RAID is enabled. And it is. That's good. And then under peripherals, we want to make sure that the RAID expert utility, uh, let's take a look at our array, manage array properties. Let's make sure that the, oh, why am I not getting any option here? Hmm. It's almost like it didn't, it didn't create the array for some reason. Let's do RAID 0. Select physical disks. Check all. Apply changes. RAID 0. Create array. Manage array properties. This is array 1. You can have multiple RAID arrays, so this is our only RAID array. I don't know why they, it's confusing because it's array one and RAID zero. We could have array two and RAID five. <laughs> it's really confusing. But anyway, it does show it all correctly now. I don't know why it didn't stick the first time. So let's save and exit before it changes its mind on us. <laughs> and then we're gonna go back in and hopefully it'll work this time. We're gonna find out here in just a minute. Did I forget to click create the RAID array the first time? This is what happens when you're live, man. <laughs> Just in a hurry trying to get through this. But it's, um, I, I swore I did it, but I guess I didn't. So we're going to verify that now. So we're booting again to that Acronis Windows PE Rescue Media, which I had to inject the RAID drivers to, as I mentioned, so that it will see the RAID array. Otherwise. It'll never see it. You'll be just spinning in circles all day if you don't have the drivers installed to recognize them. So once again, we're going to go through the same options. We're going to choose uh, Recover My Disks. We'll browse. We want to look at uh, Threadripper with RAID. Click OK. Click Next. Well, yeah, we'll click Next. I have to select it, I guess, huh? Threadripper with Gosh darn it, there was a big delay there. So recover, Red Ripper with RAID, next. There we go, recover the whole disk, yeah. And I want the whole disk, click next. It's gonna analyze the image, just like before. This is a little complicated, but like anything else, if you do it over and over and over again, through repetition, you won't even think anything of it. And people will go, wow, you're so smart. <laughs> now, do you see we have an option that says disk one, not initialized, 1.3 terabyte. That's where we want the image to restore to. So we click next and proceed. Watch how fast this is gonna restore basically 100 gigs of data. This is incredibly fast. Now, as I mentioned, there is a Windows imaging tool that is included with Windows 10 that costs you nothing to use it but it doesn't offer all these really cool bells and whistles that compress data and allow you to select certain select files out of the image like Acronis does and um, incremental and differential backup, all kinds of features and automation that Acronis offers that Microsoft doesn't. Microsoft just gives you a basic 
imaging tool, which is better than nothing. And that way you don't have to worry about what to back up. You're just going to get everything. But if you have a lot of stuff, it could take a while. And Microsoft doesn't really allow you to make any changes or alterations to the backup. That's what you get for free. It's very basic. So it's going to take you longer. It's time versus money, always. And Acronis is so inexpensive, I just can't justify using the built-in Windows 10 tool because it's so limited. It'd be like being too cheap to use a word processor so you just use Notepad. It's there and it'll do the job, or WordPad, but it's nowhere near as good as a, a word processor, whether that, you know, that's Office, Microsoft Word, or Google, or LibreOffice, OpenOffice. Those word processors, you know, they have spell check, a bunch of features and things that you simply aren't going to get with the basic stuff included with Windows. Microsoft Paint is very basic. It doesn't compare to Photoshop. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff Microsoft gives you in Windows is basic stuff that's free. And if that's good enough for you, use it. But if you like to have more control, more power, and speed things up, make things more efficient, then third-party software is the only way to go to get that sort of... Uh, uh, solution. Now that's it. We, we've already completed the backup, uh, the restoration of the backup. It's just synchronizing it right now, which just takes a second. And that's 100 gigs of data right there. Boom. In and out. So in just a moment here, we're going to get um, confirmation. Should happen any second now. <laughs> any minute. Any minute at all. <laughs> this is taking longer than the, than the restore. Come on, baby. Let's go. You got things to do today. I, I don't know why this part's taking so long, but be, I have to tell myself to be patient. There it is. There it is. Recover operation succeeded. Click OK. And... Um, you know, if we want to uh, close this out, let me get rid of my picture up here in the corner so I can see that X in the corner. We'll just hit that X and hit this X. Okay. Now I'm going to shut the machine off. Just turn it off and I'm going to pull the, both flash drives out. I'm done with these flash drives now. So I'll just set them down. Now the machine, if I flip it back on, should boot in RAID mode, and we're going to run Crystal Disk Mark, and we're going to compare the numbers just to verify we're in RAID 0 mode. This version of Windows also has my PowerDirector software on it, which the other one didn't have, and it also has, um, yeah, Office 365 is on here, and Office 365 is not on the other image. That's why the image sizes are so different. It is possible to convert this image to a single boot drive or to take a single boot drive and convert it to RAID. I don't want to get into that now, but it involves using a tool called Acronis Universal Restore and maybe, well not maybe, definitely in the future I will make a video on how that works. And here you are. There's Thready, there's the PowerDirector software, there's the Acronis software already installed. That was fast, right? And look at how much data it recovered. Think of the time savings. Think of how much time I spent installing, activating, updating, drivers, da 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 uh, That's not what I wanted. I wanted to look at the size of the capacity of the C drive now should be 1.5 terabytes. Yeah, you see there's only one C drive. There's not a C, D, and E, and it's not 500 gigs anymore. It's 1.36 terabytes, which is 1.5 terabytes. It's just Microsoft calculates it differently. If we go to properties, you'll see it restored uh, 89.4 gigs, right? See that? Pretty freaking fast. So you can go buy your $10 flash drive and you'll still be sitting there waiting. I'm already done and getting back on with my job. Now, let's take a look at, um, oh, I don't have Crystal Disk Mark on here, do I? So let's copy that. Let's pull it off of this flash drive right here. Let's grab... Uh, Oh, plugging that in there is interfering with my mouse for some reason. That's funky. So I'm not going to use that port. I'm going to use one back here instead. There we go. And 
Now that I've plugged that in, you'll see that there's the D drive, there's the crystal disk mark, same version. We'll just drag it out here to the desktop so it'll run a little faster off of the desktop than off the flash drive. And we're gonna run the exact same test one more time. Watch this. Prepare to be blown away because you're never gonna see anything this fast for a couple of years, at least out of the box. This is a special configuration you have to manually do. Look at those numbers. You know, there were a, a lot of people in the chat during the time of when I built this Thready, and they were telling me, oh, to make the RAID mode work, you gotta change the SATA mode to RAID. Well, we're not dealing with SATA, we're dealing with NVMe, so I was really getting upset with people. And then I was configuring a machine a couple of weeks ago, and, and again, the whole chat room was like, you gotta configure RAID and SATA. I'm like, I'm not dealing with SATA. But that particular motherboard implementation required SATA mode to be in RAID, even though I wasn't RAIDing SATA, I was RAIDing NVMe. That really upset me. That really upset me, because it doesn't make any sense how one manufacturer did it one way and another manufacturer does it another way. And that's why these videos are so important that you can just click by click and follow along if you have the exact same motherboard. So that's the key. If you don't have this motherboard, these steps won't necessarily apply to you. If you have an X399 based motherboard, then you should have similar steps, but they may not be exactly as I've shown unless you have exactly the same motherboard. If you wanna live in a world where everything's exactly the same and you wanna lose your personal expression, go buy an Apple. This is the benefit of the PC world is that there are so many differences out there that you don't have to be like everybody else. But if you prefer to be like everybody else, that's what the Apple world is for. So just keep that in mind. A major difference in self-expression and in price because in the PC world there's a lot more competition and that lowers prices. Apple just makes Apple and you pay what, you, what they tell you to pay and that's why they're the richest company on the planet if I'm not mistaken. All right, now take a look at what these write speeds are gonna look like. What was our write speeds before? About 1700, I said, right? Now clearly our read speed did not triple. We're not seeing 9,000 on the read speeds. What's happening is we're hitting the limit of how much data can be transmitted through the, the uh, channels to the CPU. And we're, we're just hitting that limit. If you have a 100 horsepower car and your foot's to the floor and the acceleration isn't you pushing you back in the seat, that's because the car's giving you all it's got to give you. It's nothing wrong with it. That's just as, you know, you can put as much gas in it as you want. It's just not going to go any faster than that or accelerate any quicker. And that's what we're dealing with here. We're, we're hitting a bottleneck, uh, or not a bottleneck, but we're hitting a limitation of, of saturation where we have filled it up. Look at those numbers. Now, I do believe it's possible through other means to get these numbers higher through uh, specialized controller cards and specialized hardware. However, um, I don't want you to think that every time you add a drive, you're gonna double your speed because it doesn't quite work that way. But it is clearly faster than it was. And instead of having a 500 gig C drive, I now have a 1.3 or 1.5 terabyte so all my storage is in one place. But if any single drive fails or becomes corrupted, the whole thing's gone. It, it's no different than inside of a hard drive, there are several platters. If one platter is damaged, the whole drive becomes basically unreadable without specialized recovery software. The same can be said about this. There is specialized recovery software to recover RAID arrays off NVMe, but they're very, very expensive. So back up, back up, back up. Make those copies of things that are important. And with the Cronus trimage, you saw how fast it was. There's no excuse not to. Hard drives are cheaper now than they've ever been. Newegg had a two terabyte little laptop drive running off USB power for $59.99 for two terabytes, a mechanical little laptop portable drive with a USB cable. You don't have to even give it power. It runs off the power from the USB port. Two terabytes, 60 bucks. I mean, you can get a year of a Cronus or Mosey for about the same price, not for a system image, but at least 
Look, you can always reinstall Windows. It's a pain to reinstall. But you can't recover the data that you created if you didn't back it up. It's gone forever, uh, apart from potential data recovery services, which are expensive and don't happen quickly. Data recovery is a slow process, and there's no guarantees, depending on how the data was lost, whether or not they can get any of it back. Best to avoid that scenario. All data recovery businesses shouldn't exist. If everybody backed up what was important, that would be an industry that should not exist. But there you have it. And there's our final numbers. What do you think? So right now with the Cronus, uh, I've got the two images. Keep in mind, there's two images on this one flash drive. This is an $85 flash drive, or at least it's 85 bucks right now on a, uh, Amazon. It's 256 gig SanDisk Extreme Pro USB 3.1. And I'm only using, let me see, let me plug it in. How much of this data am I using on here? Always takes three attempts to plug it in one of two ways. I never get over that. We are using the blue part, right? Go to properties. So that's got two Acronis images on it. And as you can tell, if that's the average size of my images that I'm making, so two of them are taking 35 gigs and there's 220 gigs available, that means I can put on another seven or eight backups onto that one single drive. Pretty cool, right? And here's the thing. If you have an old solid state drive, let's say you upgraded because you bought one a few years ago and its capacity is too small and you've replaced it with a newer, bigger solid state drive, you can take your old one, if it's SATA, and plug a little USB adapter cable. It's five bucks for this adapter cable and that converts it into USB. You don't have to buy a flash drive. You can convert your old SST into a flash drive basically with a $5 cable. Now granted, its physical size will be a bit larger, but it'll be probably just as fast. And you don't have to put it in an enclosure because there's nothing exposed in an SSD. It's already enclosed. So it may not be as compact, but it's a great use for an old SSD. Or if an SSD is on sale for 20 bucks and it's like 128 gigs, good luck finding a flash drive of that size that will work that fast for that price. But again, it's gonna be a bit larger. Obviously, you're gonna buy a little $5 cable. It plugs into the USB, uh, I'm sorry, it plugs into the SATA port and the power port on one plug on the back of the USB. I keep saying the same thing. It's a little plug that plugs into the back of the SSD and the other side of the plug is USB. And you plug it in and it's, it just works. It's all there is to it. So you don't have to buy anything special. You can be creative. Welcome to the PC world is all I'm saying. So I can put, you know, seven or eight more backups on that same flash drive from seven or eight different computers or possibly more or possibly less depending on how much data I'm backing up. I just wanted to demonstrate how freaking cool that was. All right, does anybody have any questions for me about this whole process or tech-related questions? Uh, let me switch, let me turn this off. And let me go to the main camera so I can see you. There we go. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> this is what happens when I leave things in an on state. When I come back, they activate again. All right. <clears throat> so I know there's about a 90 second delay from when I talk to when you hear me because I have the DVR function enabled, which enables you to rewind live video. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, I'm going to just stall here to wait for you guys to catch up to me. Eddie says, Carrie, I have an M.2 NVMe drive installed on my Z97 motherboard, but it only runs at 2x speed. Well, that's because 2x speed was the only speed that existed when Z97 came out. Can I move it to a PCIe adapter by four? And if so, will I have to reinstall Windows? Um, you know, Eddie, I don't know the answer to that. If, it's, if what you're saying is you boot to it, and you move it to a PCIe adapter, will the PCI bus move faster? I don't know. 
And will it be bootable? Well, I know you have to have a UEFI BIOS, which you should have with Z97, but for the expense, you'd be better off just buying a more modern motherboard, you know, even if it's a Z170 motherboard, which is the next step up from a Z97. It's compatible with the chip you have. I think it is, isn't it? I'm sure the chat room will help. I can't remember what the socket was on Z97. Is it a socket 1151? Because you can pick up a motherboard for 100 bucks. When you add in the expense, what's uh, the add-in card cost? I really don't know if that'll work, but I'm sure someone in the chat can answer it. Kerry, have you used Macrium Reflect? Yes, I have, and that's why I use Acronis. Is Acronis free? No, nothing good is free, no. You can get um, a copy of Acronis to do clones with, like when you buy a Samsung SSD or some hard drives come with a very limited version of Acronis that only allows cloning. It doesn't give you any of the benefits, bells, whistles, and features like creating bootable media and stuff like that. It's just for that one. Uh, and if you don't have that, like if somebody says, here, I, you can have my free version of the Acronis tool that came with my SSD so you can use it on your SSD. If your SSD isn't the same brand, it won't work. Acronis is only 30 bucks. It's not a major investment. It, uh, I think there's a trial of it you can download that's limited if you want to play with it. You can go to acronis.com and look to see if there's a free trial. But in general, uh, free tools are worth exactly what you pay for them. I wouldn't expect much for nothing. You get what you pay for in this world. Dark Cypher Lucius said, all I did was get a PCIe adapter and it still booted fine. Here's what I can tell you. Here's what I would do if I were you, because I really don't know the answer to this. And it'd be great if you were local in Phoenix and we could do it here and see for ourselves. In general, I think it's a bad idea to put money into a system that old. I think that money would be better spent into a more modern system. Because when you increase your storage speed, you're really not going to benefit from it on a system that old. Your whole system is slow. It's not just your storage. So if you wanted to experiment with it, what I would do is buy the card, put the, take the NVMe drive out of your motherboard and plug it into the adapter card, plug the adapter card in and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, put the NVMe drive back where it was. Lesson learned and return the card if you can return it. That's what I would do. So many people today are so afraid of experimenting. They're so afraid of I don't know what the fear is. I really don't understand it. Uh, these items can be returned and there's lessons to be learned through experience that you're not gonna learn through watching a YouTube video. That's why I make the YouTube video so I can share my real world experience unscripted so you have a more realistic expectation if you were to follow in the same processes that I demonstrate. You'll see my struggles, my misunderstandings, my misinterpretations, my frustrations, that's all part of it. But what I want to convey in these videos is for you to be self-sustaining. It's as if the, with the internet now, the world is a buffet. And people are asking me, is the chicken any good at the buffet? Is the steak any good at the buffet? Go to the buffet and eat. Well, can you put it on the plate for me? Listen, <laughs> listen. I want you to be self-reliant. I want you to have no fear. I want you to not be afraid of mistakes. Mistakes are what we learn from. Mistakes are to be embraced. I want you to try everything at the buffet. Nothing's gonna kill you. If it looks interesting to you, put it on your plate. Don't ask somebody else to do it. If you don't get up and put the food on your plate, you're gonna starve. And I don't want you to mentally starve. I don't want this nourishment. I don't want the only nourishment you're getting to be from the internet. I want your mental nourishment to come from actually doing something. And that everything you're going to do, you're going to do right the first time. I want to encourage all of you to play a little bit, to get in there and experiment. Have backups so you have a safety net to fall back on. And there's nothing to worry about. And the, the, all these things that you buy can be stolen from you. But the knowledge and the experience that you have can never ever be taken from you. You will have that your whole life. It is priceless and I encourage all of you 
to do it while you can. Because there may come a time, and it could be any day, where you can't for some reason or another. It could be financial, it could be physical, it could be lots of different reasons why you can't do it. Do it while you can. And try the buffet. Don't ask to be served. Get a plate, walk up there, and serve yourself. Take what looks good. If you don't like it, take a bite. Don't eat it. <laughs> don't put it back. <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> put that back. <laughs> but nobody can tell you what you like until you try it, right? And it might be disgusting. It might be the best thing you ever had. You can Google on YouTube. You can search for babies eating bacon for the first time. It's hilarious. I suppose it's offensive if you're a vegan, maybe. But, but the point is, uh, these are things that nobody can explain to you. These are feelings. These are things you feel. We don't have technology yet to convey that. We have basic words like love. What does love mean? Do you, when you love a lover, is that the same as loving a brother or sister or a dog or pet? I hope not, but we only have one word to convey it. So how do you explain love to somebody who's never felt it? How do you explain pain? Let's say an alien race came down and they don't know what pain is. How would you explain pain to somebody who's never felt it? So as an educator, how can I explain things to you if you refuse to try it for yourself without having all these reassurances that everything's going to work? It may not work. That's okay. I hope for your sake it doesn't work the first time so that you learn from it and you get those feelings. You get that rush of adrenaline and anxiety and it's, you're alive, man. You're alive. Live. Advanced detailing and modeling has contributed $20. He says, thank you for the great education while I'm working, Carrie. I usually don't make these live feeds. Also, a big shout out to Catherine Anna Hauserman. My Quadro P4000 came today, hope to build next week. How much was that Quadro P4000? Uh, that's a very high-end graphics card for those of you who don't know. Very high-end. You think a 1080 Ti is a lot of money? You think an RTX 2080 is a lot of money? Hold on, how much was the Quadro P4000? It was only $750? Well, that's cheap. Quadro cards are used in workstations for serious work. You like, a, you know those big oil rigs they have in the ocean? They surface, they, they map the surface of the ocean floor. And you need like a, a, a Quadro-based graphics card, which by the way, these graphics cards start around $5,000 and go up to $10,000 and they do intense computations very, very quickly. Big, big, huge, complex computations. And so these companies that um, have these oil rigs that go out in the ocean, they have to map the surface of the ocean floor and it's extremely computing intensive. And uh, yeah, you're not gonna be playing Call of Duty on that thing. <laughs> At least I don't expect you would. The contribution came in from uh, Ben DeCure. He's contributed $4.99. He says, amen, brother. I guess that was about my soapbox Tony Robbins speech about doing something, which is great. And uh, Bernick has contributed $5. He says, thank you for your video. Well, thank you, Bernick. Thank you for contributing. Yeah, we're seeing that card at different prices around the world. They're 886 euros, 859 dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advanced detailing and modeling says no games for me. Let's make advanced detailing and modeling a moderator. Thank you.
All right. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up today's broadcast. I guess that's going to be a quick one for today. Slow Death 007 says, just for those people who think a Quadro card will make your games faster, they don't. They just come with special features required to accelerate work in specific fields. This is true. Same with Red Ripper, same with the Core i9. Calling the Core i9 the game best gaming processor is like calling the Ferrari the best family vehicle you can buy. It's not. It's a specialized tool. And if you don't use that specialized tool the way it was designed, then you've wasted your money because you could have bought a less expensive tool to use it for the way that you're using it. Um, some people, they just get caught up with things, owning things. It's like a weird way of, you're buying happiness. You're going, oh, I need to have this monitor. I, yeah, I'm going to be happy if I just have this. I'm going to be happy if I just have that. You know what? You should just be happy that you're alive and that you're healthy or that you have the health that you have rather than focusing on what you don't have because that's a downward spiral that will never be satisfied. There's always a faster CPU. There's always a bigger, faster hard drive. There's always, everything's bigger, faster, and it's always going to be that way. And so if your happiness is based on how much money you spend, I don't want to be you. You've got to be happy here. You got to be happy with who you are. These things, these are like little drugs you're taking. You're taking a little drug. I got my little 1080 Ti now and I, now I'm a little buzzed. And then the buzz wears off. And now the 2080 Ti, I go, ooh, we got a buzz. And like drugs, it's expensive and the euphoria is temporary. Try and find an inner happiness first and foremost if you want to be happy over a longer period of time and it will cost you nothing. True happiness is free. And I think I got a package arriving. Hold on, guys. Hold on just a second. Yeah, that's what that was. Package arrived. All right, what do we got? Uh, thank you, all the mods and chat. It looks like uh, we have Jack's toy joining us. Hey, Jack. It looks like he's taking off. Good to see you there. Jack Russell's asking, I'm wondering if a Ryzen 5 1400 is a good CPU for gaming. I'll let the chat room answer that. M Copyright says, but unlike drugs, PC components don't hurt us unless we cut ourselves while installing the AO shield. It depends on how you define the word hurt. If you don't think that there's mental damage happening as a result of somebody online challenging your competence, uh, that does hurt. Uh, perhaps there's, I was gonna say no withdrawal, but no, there's withdrawal. There's serious gaming addictions that people deal with. Uh, the, I think my analogy is more accurate than you're giving it credit for, but perhaps you were just trying to be funny. Um, drugs, seriously, you'll go to jail for and if you're using them illegally, but not all drugs are illegal. And not all drugs hurt. Some drugs help. So, yeah. Magni Johansson's contributed 109 Norwegian Krona. He says, thanks for showing us Acronis again. Just became a super user for Acronis at my new job. And I needed to refresh my memory on how to use the rescue disk. Great. Well, that's well. Thank you, Magni. Thanks for your continued support and contribution. Zen Carter's contributed ten Canadian dollars. He says, "Carrie, I was going to email you, but I have to credit you properly. Your inspiration, messing with scammers, got me back into it. And last night, their mistake allowed me to rescue a victim from fraud. That's awesome." I love that I have uh, a very supportive chat room. I want you to be aware that, you know, when I encourage you to ask questions, 
Even if I don't know the answer, my chat room often does. And even if I do, do have the answer, my chat room may have a different answer. And I want you to think for yourself. Don't just assume that my answer is more qualified or better than the answer coming from the chat room. I could be completely wrong. But I, what I want you to do is I want you to take this information and continue your own independent research to determine the answer that best fits your needs, your budget, your expectations. We want to help you, but we don't want to do it for you. Do you understand? We want to help you get to your goal, but we don't want to do the work to get to your goal. We want to assist. And there's a big difference because we run into people and they start out asking and then they keep sort of needing to be, well, I keep calling it spoon fed. I want to see people more self-reliant. You have the internet available to you with all human knowledge possible in one place. And it's a shame to not see it being used. And so nobody really knows you better than you. It's impossible to tell somebody what they should get unless you know that person really well and you know their needs, you know their budget, you know their expectations. As such, when you get questions answered, technical questions on the internet, um, especially if it's what should I buy, uh, you don't realize how complex of an answer that is. It'd be like asking somebody, if I was a mechanic, you say, what car should I buy? Well, I don't know you. I don't know. Do you have a big family? Do you, need a, do you need a big car with a lot of seats? Are you looking for a sports car? Are you looking for a hybrid or an electric car? Are you looking for a four-wheel drive, something you can drive in the snow? You need all-wheel drive? Are you in a mountainous area? Will you be towing anything? Do you want a convertible? Do you need a pickup truck? Do you haul? Do you need an extended cab pickup truck? Maybe you need a, you know, more of a utility vehicle? Or are you looking for you know, a hatchback? Or do you want a trunk? Does it need to have a back seat? Are you looking for, you know, it goes on and on and on and on and on. So it's the same when you ask people about computer part. Is this a good gaming chip? Is this a good gaming chip? What games? At what resolution? Um, what budget? And what are you going to expect it to do in general? You get what you pay for. You spend less, you get less. And listen, I think I need to go because I think my, I hear landscapers. <laughs> so before all the noise starts, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye now. I want to thank everybody who's contributed today for your contributions. And again, if you like the video, whoop, where's my mouse? If you like the video, please click the like button. And if you want to subscribe, be sure and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to activate notifications. I have to go. I'll see you all again very soon. I'll see you maybe Monday. Maybe this weekend, probably Monday. Thanks again, everybody. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.